Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My prayer is you're, you're okay. You are blessed of the Lord. You've woken up, you know, sharp, ready to worship God, ready to move on in this salvation, in this salvation journey. Praise Jesus. I bless God for his mercies. I bless God for his kindness. I bless God for his love. I bless God for who he is in us today, for the grace he has given us to enjoy salvation, the grace he has given us to be blessed of the word of God. Hallelujah. We want to thank him, to honor him, and to bless him. Praise the Lord. So we continue with our sermon in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, we started a sermon entitled "The Fruits of Salvation." Last Sunday we looked at well, we, we looked at what? Last Sunday we looked at the first love. Today we are looking at joy. Praise God. Galatians chapter five, uh, twenty-two. The word of God is clear. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, and uh, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Praise God. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I taught you Psalms chapter 1. The Bible says, he shall be like a tree that is planted beside many waters. It is its leaf does not wither and it gives its fruit in every season. Praise God. And I talked about the fruit of salvation is the product, the change that comes with that transition from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. When you give your life to Jesus, you have jumped from wickedness to righteousness you have come off from malice to love you have come off from being a child of satan who is a troublemaker to a child of god who is a peacemaker praise the lord so these are the products when you say you love jesus what what have you become what is the change what is the change can people can people point at any change in you can people say um since this person gave their lives to Jesus, for sure they were prostitutes and they are no longer prostitutes. Is there, is there somebody somewhere who has a testimony about you? Is there somebody who can, who can say something positive about you? And if they are talking about posi uh, positive things after you've given your life to Jesus, that is the fruit of salvation. And so... Today we are looking at joy, you know, the joy, the joy of the Lord, the joy being happy, you know, the state of having that vibrant, you know, uh, persona, you are looking good, you are looking, you know, you are happy, life is good, life is bad, life, whatever life is, you have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is an opener to blessings, praise the Lord. If you are in your life every day, you are gloomy, you are full of gloom, your face is always down, there is nothing that can lift your countenance, then that is a very dangerous thing. However, some of us, you know, the, the people who got saved in the early 90s, late 80s, we used to think, I don't know, we personally, I don't know about others, but we used to think if you're born again, then you must be a very serious person. You know, salvation comes with seriousness. And we never used to know it's serious about the seriousness. Yes, it comes with seriousness, but it's seriousness on other levels, not seriousness of, of your daily life. You know, how you talk to people, you have always to be serious, you know, you're born again. And so the people would flow you know in the spirit those days they were not they were the touch me not kind of people you don't you don't cross them you don't even make a joke in their presence you know they are born again and you know they are servants of god you know they are full of the spirit and it's like for the holy spirit to speak to you you must be joyless <laughs> You must be very joyless. You must be full of gloom. You must, you must look, you must be sad. You must, hey, you must wear this garment of seriousness. And so in that, it was not joyful. And I'm sorry to say, most of such people, they fell off from, you know, the rock. They, they walked away because there's only too much a soul can bear. Praise God. Who said when you get saved, laughter is off? Um, 
you cannot celebrate when others are celebrating because you you are serious i mean you are born again you are very serious so in this serious and then when it comes to things that like immorality you're not serious when it comes to things like abusing people you're not serious you'll find that servant of god that brother who is very seriously serious in his seriousness eh? when it comes to you know when he's vocal the things he will say you you will look at him and you will start now calculating the level of his evil evilness in his heart praise god so this is the but the thing is we we had that misconception about the joy of the lord and we thought for you to be to if if you are born again people were not born again and then when they're giving their testimonies we would testify and say uh, me i am not rejoicing in the world i am not rejoicing like the people of the world i am i am on this journey i am going to heaven eh? i am going to heaven praise god there's a time i went to preach somewhere and then I, uh, somebody else was invited to speak after me and I, I stood and I said, oh, I am very happy. In the, I am, you know, rejoicing in the Lord. I'm happy. I give God praise for salvation. Da, da, da. And then this other person came and said, um, it is good, pastor, you are happy. Uh, you you are happy me i am very sad me i cannot be happy i cannot be happy because the enemy you know the the fact that the world is dying does not mean we are not going to be joyful we are not going to rejoice in this moment that god has given us praise the lord so many a times people misinterpret the state of you know being joyful they don't want you to enjoy life they don't want you to feel good about your life because you're born again you must be a very very serious person and if you're serious it means you'll never smile you will you you will never even you know crack a joke you will never enjoy any joke you you are serious praise god so but i want to tell you the fruit of joy every fruit of the spirit is compulsory in your life it is not please it is not uh, can you find a way to be to be joyful in this your situation it is compulsory the joy of the lord is the key praise god is the key to riding in the grace of god the bible says in isaiah chapter 12 and verse 3 with joy i shall draw uh, salvation praise god with joy let me read it for you let me read it hallelujah it says with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation what does it mean a water water equals to life life in salvation life in a, the, the life life giving you know water is life when you take water when you're thirsty you cool your thirst when you take water even when you have no food you you can move on but in salvation water is the word of god water is life so let me tell you something the bible says with joy you shall draw waters from the wells of salvation so it's only through joy that you will get the life in salvation the thing that makes salvation salvation you know the thing that makes salvation tangible what makes salvation enjoyable what makes people you know be happy they are born again and they're not you know looking at the world like they are laughing oh they have a bash you know you are in this meeting but in that other meeting they are really enjoying themselves then when 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 they, when they start cracking their jokes wah, wah, you forget about it you're looking at hey, 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 these people are happy these people are happy ah, ah. it is now the joy when you cultivate joy in you you will draw waters in the wells of salvation meaning you will enjoy salvation if you put joy in your life if you purpose you are going to have joy when you read uh, romans chapter 14 uh 14 i think 17 it says the kingdom of god is not uh, it's on it's not only uh, you know on eating and drinking it's not about eating and drinking but about joy uh, righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost the three things that make up the kingdom of god righteousness peace and joy praise the lord so if you have come into this kingdom of god the first thing you know it is not just celebrating it is not just whatever but 
the compulsory thing is righteousness, peace, and joy. Those are things that we should find in the Holy Ghost. Other than eating and celebrating, there is also peace and joy. Praise the Lord. So what is this joy? The joy, the state of being happy with who you are, where you are, what in despite the situation, the surroundings, you choose to be a happy person. Praise God. You choose to look at the brighter side of life. Uh, sometimes, you know, when, when the enemy wants to deprive you of your peace in salvation, deprive you of your joy in salvation, guess what he will do? He will attack. He will attack something in you that will make you draw sorrow from this life. The enemy is a master, is a mastermind guy, is is a bad enemy, he's not good, he's not joking, and he knows you, and he knows the kind of words he can let you hear, and then you will not sleep for four days. He knows the kind of situation that he can throw at you, and then you will not have peace. You know, the joy of God, you will be sad. You know, the opposite of joy is sorrowful, sad, you know, your countenance is fallen. Your spirit is not at peace. You are not, there is no light in you. Praise God. So the enemy knows the many things he can do to switch off that light. He knows where he can press to make sure you will not even talk to your children. For a month, you'll be quiet. He takes that joy out of you. And the moment you open the door of sorrow, you open the door of sadness. Guess what? It means you are not going to draw waters from the well of salvation. You are not going to enjoy the salvation. You are going to walk through earth, you know, full of sorrow. The last time people had you laugh was the last time before you gave your life to Jesus. But after that, the enemy will be walking with you every day. Because let me tell you something. The moment you give your life to Jesus, you have registered in a war. You are now, you've declared war on the enemy. And he has declared war on you. You. War unto you if you don't know that you are already in a battlefield. You know this world, eh? It's not a, it's not a playground. The world is a battlefield, and it's a it's a it's a place of you fight and win or you lose and die. It's a place of you have to stand or you have to fall. You must choose. You must be determined. Praise the Lord. You must be determined. So in this kingdom, it is not just eating and drinking, but peace, righteousness, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So I want you to understand there is a type of joy that comes from, you know, the, your flesh. You know, when you, you, get, you, you get a deal of maybe you're counting what? You're counting in tune, your money, you're counting now profits in terms of millions. When you're, 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 you're getting, you're locking that deal, eh? look at your face, look at your eyes, your heartbeat. You know, the vibe you are, you, you are, you are emitting from your, your, your spirit, anybody near you, they can feel your joy. They can feel how happy you are. Why? Because there is a promise that you're going to crack some millions. When that promise looks like it has failed, it has, it has gone down, then there is another vibe now. There is sorrow, there is regret, there is bitterness, there is everything evil that is coming out. There is even bitterness, you know, coming out of your spirit. Somebody will sit next to you. You don't need to tell them that your deal did not go through. Your, your body language, everything around you will tell, you will tell that person something is not okay. Praise God. When you go into the clinic, uh, you know, there's a time I went for some medical checkup. And I, when I was going in, I was like, you know, panic mode. You, you know, you are like, what are they going to tell me? Am I going to be told this is my last year on earth? You know, there is that thing of this attachment with the earth. When you are told you are leaving the earth, it's not, and it's not like you're going to hell, you're going to heaven and you know it, but you are very sad. Again, you don't want to go because the people we know physically and we love physically, they are here. Praise the Lord. So when I was going, I, I had this panic mode. And uh, we, we were not even talking. Everybody was quiet because now we are going there to get a verdict. So when the results were out and that, and that guy called me and he told me, hey, your kidney, you, you know, it's like that of a 22 year old, 22 year old, uh, the whatever the ends are good. You know, they explained, hey, you are spleen, you are what, you are what, hey, 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 you should have seen me coming out. 
when they, they you, you know we were life we were full of joy because we have gotten a report that we we would have expected but we are not expecting so you see even when you look at us as we are going i mean we are happy it's not what we thought you, you know that is a kind of fleshy physical joy but there is a divine joy because you see the fruit of the holy spirit they are of the holy spirit they are not from your situation in life they are not from your flesh they are not from your family they are not from you praise god it's no longer it's not about you it's about the holy spirit the holy spirit of god is willing to pour joy into you any moment any time anywhere praise god he, as long as you know you make the choice to be happy you have gone into into you've gone into to see the doctor and he's shaking his head and you're like what and you know we have some other doctors that are just demonic he's he's now shaking it more by the time they tell you what it is they want to tell you you're halfway dead that moment you can choose to overlook that situation and ask the holy spirit because it's hard it's very hard when you're facing a death verdict for you to smile in fact when you see any criminal who's been sentenced to death and they're smiling you know i saw one who was laughing actually laughing at the woman whose son he had killed and he's just looking at her and he's trying to get her you know high contact so that he can smile and everybody if you read the comments hey everybody was pissed off and everybody was like just cut his head right now you know and even me who is so merciful who didn't want to see somebody dead i was like let him die let that one die because you have killed someone's son and you are smiling you know that one people cannot understand however you can smile at that verdict in your life if they are sentencing you to death through demonic uh, evil discoveries, oh, you have spleen cancer, oh, you have throat cancer, oh, you have breast cancer, oh, you have COVID-19. Excuse me. <coughs> Hallelujah. Excuse me. The, you can look at that verdict and smile. Praise the Lord. You can choose joy. It's a choice. You can choose to be happy. You can choose to be happy. You can choose to allow the Holy Spirit of God to fill you with a vibrant feeling. You know, they, they tell you, uh, let me use cancer as an example. If they tell you, you have cancer, the first thing that hits your head is, I am dying very soon. So you downsize your lifespan. Like if you, all your life, your dream was 120 the moment they tell you you've got breast cancer you've you and now you're what you're 40 you cannot see yourself going beyond 45 others will not even see themselves going beyond 40 40 and a half praise god they they will not they will not see why because they have been told they have cancer however because they've been told they have cancer and they've entered into a, a what a panic mode then what will happen guess what they will now open the doors of sorrow they will come out of that place full of sorrow you've just been told you've got cancer by the way it could be a misdiagnosis praise god it's a lie maybe you don't have cancer and this guy just looks at you he's looking at hey this one shows there's cancer you know we have some people who are just funny it's a lie even it's based on a lie it's not even true from that moment you will get all the symptoms because you see you've now turned into another mode you become sorrowful you become bitter you start complaining you start murmuring you start i don't know what however if they tell you you've got cancer they've told you that and you're like uh -huh, what type of cancer you know whether they are shocked you're not shocked they are shocked you're not shocked then they tell you they tell you and you come out of there you go buy yourself chips drink some soda go, ignore and continue with your life i am telling you even if you've got cancer for sure and it is even stage three but the reception how you receive the news in your life you reject it and put on a joy mode and at times i tell people if you've got what six months to live 
Why must you spend the last six months of your life crying, complaining, murmuring, doing everything that the Lord has warned us not to do? Praise the Lord. The Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Philippians 3.1. Rejoice in the Lord. So what is this that they will tell you that will automatically kick out your knowledge of the Lord? You know, some people, they love the Lord and they are happy. They are joyful in the Lord for as long as everything is going their way. Everything is going their way. If nothing is going their way, my friend, huh? They are going to be, they, they will make sure everybody around them will suffer because they are suffering. I've ever seen this person who goes out to work. They left everybody in the home. Everybody was okay. They, every, they went in the morning. Everything was fine. But when they went out there, they, they, they quarreled with people. They, they quarreled with a guy on the traffic. They quarreled with a guy in the office. They quarreled with a watchman in the place where they were going. And when, by the time they're coming back home, they are so annoyed with the world that when the wife says, hey, welcome home, darling, the look, the kids are like, mommy, mommy, ah, leave me. What is wrong? I am very annoyed. You know, they are banging doors there. You've just come home. We don't know what happened to you out there. Now you're banging doors on us. We try to give you food. I don't want food. You're not even explaining. You're not kind. Somebody took their time to cook for you. But because you've come into their home joyless, everybody must suffer. Praise the Lord. Everybody must suffer. And that is us. That is human. We are like that. But when you are born again, please be careful how you conduct yourself. Because it doesn't matter if you're not joyful. I should also be sorrowful. It doesn't matter when you're crying and it's not my time to cry. I should cry. Yes, Jesus said, mourn with those who are mourning, cry with them. I can cry with you as per the scripture. Not because I want to cry or I feel like crying. No, it doesn't have to be. I can just cry with you for the sake of the kingdom of God, for the sake of the word of God. However, it doesn't have, that, have to be that when you're crying, everybody must cry. When you're not okay, everybody must not be okay. Have you ever seen this before? when they are sad they can beat you up because you're smiling you just smile you're like hey and they ask you what are you laughing about what is there to laugh about in this situation what are you you know the way it is weighing down on them should be the same same way it is weighing down on me no no please no and you you see the people who will choose joy over many things they are called the jokers people will call them jokers this one is a joker you know, something happens in your life and everybody's expecting you to walk like this. And then you, you are just like, okay, it's God. God is with me. And they look at you and they're like, hey, one boy, one boy, where were you? You're not serious. One boy, where were you serious? One you going to Takua? You know, they want you now because you've just been told you've got cancer. They want to come and find me like this. And everybody's like, oh, Pastor Vero, mm, you, you, Pastor, oh, Nico, Papa John. Nico, oh, mm, you're seeing me. You're just seeing me when you're seeing me. You're just with me. You know, I make you, you know, I have to look like, hey. But when you come and you find me, I'm talking, I'm joking. You say, is this the one we were told is sick? Why? Because who you is happy? Who you is talking? And they shouldn't talk. They shouldn't rejoice. They shouldn't be happy. Excuse me. Please get alive. Get, draw waters from the wells of salvation. Because you see, the salvation of Jesus Christ is the only thing that can exempt you from the verdict of cancer. Praise God. They, it's the only thing that you can have and they tell you you are about to die. Cancer stage three. And they give you 30 days to live. And after six months, they find you in the supermarket you you know you collide with them and they're like you look familiar yeah you look like my doctor and you're like oh i'm alive and well why because if you're born again if you truly truly love jesus christ if you truly truly believe in the word of god then your life you are an ambassador of christ on this earth things do things do, things things shouldn't just go the way things go for any other person you are a child of god you believe in god 
Your father is the creator of the universe. He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth us. He is Jehovah Jireh, the God, our provider. You are, you are, your story is different, praise God. So when you sit on that queue and there are 10 of you with cancer, your story is different. Or rather, your cancer then is different. That spirit, it cannot have its day. It cannot shine in your day like the way it is shining on these other people. And I am not discriminating. It's obvious. If you love God, he works with you. Praise the Lord. You know, somebody can say, oh, so the, the other people with cancer, what is she saying? Eh, this one is a hater. I'm not a hater. I'm just starting a fact. If you love Jesus Christ and somebody else who does not love Jesus Christ, yours is different. Praise God. Yours is different. Your end is different. Your end is good. He says, I have a plan for you. It is a plan of good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Choose the joy of the Lord. And you see now, when you get these evil reports and you enter into panic, sad, sorrow mode, depression, you know, like something like cancer, for example. Cancer is an eater of flesh, a drinker of blood. Look at somebody whose blood is just disappearing. Look at somebody whose flesh is just wearing off. The eater of flesh, drinker of blood is operating in that life. So cancer is such a spirit. The moment they tell you, you've got cancer, that is what has been now, that is what has been triggered in your life. That is what will start happening in your life. The reaction you will start getting, you will start losing weight, you will start losing blood, you will, it is cancer. It is now warfare, praise God. Can you imagine? Now you choose to open the door, depression, it feeds cancer. Uh, sorrow feeds cancer. Praise God. Anger, you rage, feeds cancer. Instead of stuffing that demon, when you have that spirit, it has attacked you. Yes, it is cancer. Stuff it. Don't give it depression. Don't feed it. The moment, bitter people, bitter people die of cancer so fast. They are bitter. They go into that. They go into that office. They are next, and they are told, "Oh, oh, oh, oh!" They look at the results like this, and they're like, "You know this thing lodged here? Hey, this one now. This noodle. This is cancer." And um, excuse me, they come out of there. They come out of there. You know, rageous, raging. If it's a man that day, he will go, he will beat up his wife. He will beat up his children. He's not telling them he was diagnosed with cancer. No, he is now annoyed. He is venting. He is raging. I mean, why me? You know, when they say, why me? They crush their television. When they say, why me? They bang the doors of their fridge until everything there is messed up. Praise God. Why? Because they are annoyed. They are so mad. It is them. They've opened the door to feed that spirit. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Praise God. The Bible says in, uh, in Psalm, is it Psalms chapter 11? Psalms 11. Mm -mm, I have a Bible that is a dot Bible. Hallelujah. Some sort. There's a place in Psalms that says we shall in his presence there is fullness of joy at his right hand there are treasures evermore. Is it 11 or 12? One of those Psalms anyway. It is talking about in the presence of God there is its fullness of joy. Any time you find that you are a joyless person, any time you find that you are a sorrowful person, any time you find that you are riding on bitterness most of the time, then try and learn to pray. Try and learn to pray. Because prayer ushers you in the presence of God and the Bible is clear. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. Praise God. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. You will rejoice. You will be happy. You will, you, you will, you will come out of there rejoicing. You will come out of there a bit happy. Your countenance will change. Praise God. Your countenance will change. You, you will, you will, you will be vibrant. Praise the Lord. You will be vibrant. 
when you pray, even if it's five minutes prayer, five minutes, you know, sometimes you feel so pressed down and you feel like there's, you have nothing to show for, you know, you have nothing. I advise you pray, praise the Lord, pray, learn how to pray because many a times joyless people, sorrowful people, depressed people, it's because they don't talk with the maker. They don't talk with God. They don't fellowship. They stay alone. Why is it every time you are in, a, in that depressed mode, you want to be alone and lock the door? Why is it? Because the enemy is, a go is good at isolating and killing he isolates you before he kills you he isolates you and fills you and feeds any disease that you have if it's arthritis surely you know bitterness eh? bitterness and forgiveness these things they feed arthritis until your bones are twisting praise the lord and the moment you find somebody who's suffering from arthritis and they start rejoicing you know let me read your scripture in the book of proverbs eh? Let me be sure where it is. Hallelujah. Proverbs 17 and 22. Proverbs 17, 22. Mm. The word of God is clear. It says, uh, joy brings, you know, happiness and joy brings, it's like medicine to the bones. Mm -hmm. My Bible is my Bible. 1722 a cheerful heart is good medicine but a crushed spirit dries up the bones a cheerful heart is good medicine but a crushed spirit dries up the bones a cheerful heart when you choose to be happy when you choose to enjoy life no matter what to just look at the positive side of life oh they've told you you've got cancer but at least you are paying your rent, your kids, they are finished school. So what? I mean, at the end of the day, we will die someday. So choose that that message alone. Let it not be the reason why you are now going to be make, making everybody sad. You're going to be making everybody, you know, people around you are walking on eggshells because you've chosen not to be happy. You've chosen not to have any joy. You are joyless. You are, you can't rejoice. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice always. Praise the Lord. Always. Not sometimes. Not when you feel like it. Not, um, when you think it is okay, when you think it is possible, when you think, I don't know what, you know, it is a command. Rejoice in the Lord always and again, I say rejoice. Whether they say you have cancer, they say you have blood, you have a tumor in your brain, it doesn't matter what they say. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Uh, First Thessalonians 5, 16 says, Rejoice forevermore. It's not even at times. Every other time. Walk in rejoicing. This rejoicing is a spiritual thing. It's a, a fruit of the Spirit. The Bible says, If any one of you lacks, ask. Ask and it shall be given. So one of the things you ask, ask the Holy Spirit to manifest his fruits in your life. Because these fruits, they are the ones that make uh, make your salvation juicy. They are the ones that people will look and say, you really, really enjoyed your salvation. They are the ones that you, when we get into heaven, you know, some of us will get to heaven like this. You know, and they're saying, Veronica, yes. You know, it's your, the joy is not there. It's just a, you will take time to now get used to seeing good things, uh, you know, good people around you. I think even when you are there, you are trying to pass it on to Abraham. You know, your sorrow, your sadness. But if you choose to enjoy, if you choose to rejoice, if you choose joy, then you can have it because it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And for you to get this fruit, you have to meditate on the word of God day and night. You see, if you walk with some people, you walk with these people who, who do drugs, you walk with the women who just talk how they want, give yourself four years, you'll be talking like them. Whatever you associate yourself with, you can very soon be planted and look like it even, praise God. However, if you associate yourself with the word of God by 
making sure you have a program you're reading the word of god you're meditating on the word of god day and night then these fruits shall automatically you know you will be like a tree that is planted besides many waters anytime they demand for a fruit you know when it is time it's a challenging time to show love love will be found in you it's a challenging time to show joy joy will be seen in you how it is not it is not time to rejoice it is not the year of celebration for you it is sadness from january you've been burying your relatives you lost your job you lost your house you lost your car you lost your wife you lost your what however if you choose to allow the manifestation of the fruits of the holy spirit guess what you will smile people will be wondering are you still smiling praise the lord let me close off by telling you a story uh, that i once had praise the lord uh i once had this story from pastor jb masinde he told another story and he said there was a guy who was living somewhere behind someone's balcony this guy in his bedroom he could see this guy when he's going out this one up there on the, who was looking at this other one was a very sad kind of a person he was very sad he was a sad lonely human being and so this other guy he could every time he's coming out of his gate he would close the gate and shout hallelujah and then drive off he would come out of his car open the gate close it and shout hallelujah and then drive off you know and this other one was this guy what is he so happy about what is this hallelujah what is it this day is normal this day is boring what is he hallelujah about and then as it happened he had a, this hallelujah guy had a child and then the child died and then they had the wake, you know, the, the whites, they, you know, keep the body like Jaluos and I think Luyas, they keep the body overnight in the house, then they, tomorrow they'll go and bury. So they were doing that one for his son. And then in the morning, when everybody left, this guy was sitting on the balcony and he said, today I want to see if it is an Alleluia day. So... The man opened his, he was the last one to leave, so everybody's leaving, everybody's leaving, they're going to bury his child. And then he, he came out, he closed his gate, and he stood there. And this man on the balcony is, hey, hey. yeah, today, today now, today, today I know. And he turned, and he just, as he was crying, he said, hallelujah. And this guy on the balcony, he was so shocked. He was so shocked that he had to look for this man and get that thing in him that would allow him to say that hallelujah on a day such as that day. Praise the Lord. What am I saying? I'm saying you can choose the joy of the Lord. You don't have to be a serious Christian who cannot smile, who cannot laugh. Laughter is medicine to the bones. Praise God. That is what the word of God says. Draw waters from the wells of salvation the key to that is joy because the moment you choose joy you will enjoy salvation because salvation is that salvation you'll be salvaged it doesn't matter what they tell you you have choose the joy of the lord choose to be joyful you will draw waters i am telling you even if they tell you you are on cancer stage four go home laugh as you show find things that make you happy things that amuse you praise god i i read a story about a guy who was taken out of hospital so that he can go die at home and when he was he was a very rich man and he all his life he was a very busy rich man looking for money that you're going to die and leave behind he had no time for his family he has no time for god he has time for nothing however when he went home the doctors now would come and check him, you know, just to give him painkillers. He's waiting to die, like seven days to die. So he went home and when he was in sitting room, one of the, you know, his part, I don't know, somebody, a worker in his house, just uh, switched on Tom and Jerry for him. And he started watching Tom and Jerry. This is a guy who has never watched any television, you know, busy, busy. The rich who are busy, they are not idle like some people. So he started watching Tom and Jerry. And he was laughing. He was laughing. You know, he was just looking at that cat and rat, chasing each other, tricking each other. He, like people could hear his, him laughing from the upstairs. He was quack, 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 quack. The seven days passed. He didn't notice the days are gone. And the doctors who were coming to check him, they realized he was getting better. Praise God. So 
when I read that story, it's a testimony and it's, I think it's a story on, I think, placebo of something. It's not even a Christian testimony. It's just a, a story in the world, an inspiration tell. And I read it and I was like, you see, this guy, what was lacking in his life? He, he was so closed up. He had no, he didn't have any joy. He had nothing to draw any waters from the wells of salvation. He had nothing. But this time he was there. He was enjoying himself. Laughter is medicine to the bones. He got healed he realized he could take himself to the toilet he realized he didn't need to be fed he was just eating and he's laughing hey this thing is very fun qua, 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 you know and that is how the guy got healed and from that moment he chose to be happy praise god because there is the joy the joy joy is a door opener it's a key it it allows you to enjoy the fruits of salvation what are those fruits the fruits of salvation long life good health prosperity miracles praise god miracles when everything there is no way god makes a way those are the fruits of salvation enjoying the miracles of god you cannot do it if you choose to be gloomy when jesus comes he takes the gloom and fills your life with glory allow jesus to fill your life with glory so god bless you so much now let's meet next sunday so and i want you to go knowing make it a joyful week this week Choose the things that make you happy. Get a song that can, you know, trigger happiness, joy in you. Look at just, I want you to focus on your joy. I want you to focus on being happy. You know, wake up in the morning, take a shower. You make up yourself, look good, feel good about yourself, feel good about your life. Praise the Lord. It doesn't matter. You, you don't have lunch. It's okay. Miss lunch looking nice. Not looking like you are missing lunch. Praise God. Look like, let somebody visit you and think that you are skipping lunch. It's not like you are missing lunch because you don't have lunch. Praise God. So God bless you and may the Holy Spirit of God uh, activate the fruit of joy in your life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.